So now we're at f1.8 on the Sony at shutter speed 50. We're a, a, almost two stops overexposed on S log 2. Okay, so now this is with the 25mm native lens on uh, f1.8, shutter speed 50 at ISO 400. So that's the f1.8, and this is the 50 on the speed booster with the ND, shutter speed at 50. ISO 400 and f1.8, which is reading at f1.2 on the speed booster. Okay, so now this is with the speed booster again and the 50mm at f1.8 at shutter speed 50, but now I've moved the camera back to match the framing of the non speed boosted shot. So hopefully the, that should show the difference in the background blur. Okay, hi guys, how's it going? So I thought I'd do a quick video about speed boosters, just showing the difference that they really make and comparing that to a full frame camera and also comparing that to a, a micro four thirds camera, which I'm using a GH5 and on this occasion, uh, with a native lens. So showing the actual difference that the, the, the speed booster makes. So first of all, quickly explain what speed booster is. It's basically a focal reducer, uh, which is exactly like a magnifying glass, which is being stuck in between the lens and the camera. So if you stick a great big full frame lens on this and you, then you stick this onto a, a crop sensored camera like an APS-C or a Micro Four Thirds, most commonly used for a Micro Four Thirds, but you know you can even fit a speed booster onto a full frame camera and then fit medium format lenses onto that. So you know they're just, and you, get, you get the big lens and the smaller sensor and it helps reduce that light down into a smaller area uh, and optimize the lens for the smaller sensor. And what that does is it basically widens our field of view, which allows you to use a longer focal length. So if you want to have that sort of shallow depth of field kind of look, then you're more like it's easier to get it with one of these basically. Um, and the other thing it does is because it's concentrated the, that light down onto a smaller area, there's less light being wasted around the, the sensor, spilling around the sensor. It's being concentrated down and it's exactly the same as like a, a magnifying glass in the sunlight. It focuses that light into a smaller area so you get a brighter image. So it's just like when you're burning ants with a magnifying glass. This is what this is doing. It's, it's, it's taking all that light, putting it into a smaller area so you get a brighter image. With the, this is the XL Metabone speed booster which is a 0.64 uh, speed booster. And with this one, it's basically a almost a stop and a half. It's just over a stop of light. With most speed boosters, it's about one stop of light you get extra. With this one, it's a little bit extra again. It's almost a stop and a half, um, which can make a big, big difference in low light situations. So if you do film with smaller sensored cameras and you film in bad light a lot, you know these are a big, big boon. And the other big boon is, like I say, giving it that wider field of view um, with the longer focal length, which is allowing you a shallower depth of field. So it doesn't change the depth of field. The thing that changes the depth of field is the focal length that you're then allowed to use to keep the same framing. So the three things that affect your depth of field are the distance to the subject, the physical aperture size, so the f-stop number, and your focal length. Those are your three things that control depth of field. The sensor size, that's basically just about cropping the image. So it's not the larger sensor on a full frame camera which is giving you a shallow depth of field. There's, a lot of people get confused about that. Like I said, there's a, a complete breakdown, a scientific explanation of all of that. If you have a video that I've already done, so there's a, a link down below in the description. So click on that if you want to find out exactly what I'm talking about there because it's quite a long video and, and there is, there's more to it than what people think and it's, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding regarding uh, depth of field and crop factors. So have a look at that video if you want to go into the full science with ray tracing, drawings and all the rest of it which, which tries to explain it as clearly as I could. Uh, anyway, back to the little test today. So as you can see I've got a four frame uh, camera filming me at the moment, it's a7 III and I've got the GH5 with a native 25mm lens. As you can see, those two lenses match very, very, very similar in terms of your our field of view. Uh, they're both at f1.8, so one of the things that you're gonna notice, I focus just here on this little color, color chart, and you'll notice that the background on the full frame camera is blurrier than it is with the GH5, even though they're both at f1.8. Like I said, the main difference there in terms of depth of field is the focal length. Um, so this is where our speed booster can step in and change things up. So let's show you a couple of shots. The first shot is with a 50mm uh, lens on a dumb adapter on the GH5. So this is without a speed booster. So as you can see, that's a relatively uh, tight 
looking image. This is at f1.8, by the way. Now let's add the speed booster. So same lens, same distance, uh, both at f1.8, but now with the speed booster. As you can see, we've now got a much wider uh, field of view. Now let's compare that to the uh, same uh, camera with a 25 millimeter native lens on. As you can see, that's a bit wider again, uh, but we've we, our depth of field is now sort of it's wider, so we've got less of a shallow depth of field look because of our focal length has now changed. Um, now let's compare that to a four frame camera uh, at f1.8, same distance, and now this is the same 50 millimeter lens that was on the speed booster, but now on a four frame camera. Now, as you can see, that's that's the framing is pretty much the same as to the, the native 25 millimeter lens on the GH5, uh, but it's also keeping our, our depth of field from the, uh, the longer focal length that we had from the speed booster and from the cropped image. Uh, with the dumb adapter, so that's what the that's the sort of all the differences that you're going to get out of speed booster, sort of compared side by side. But now let's have a look at a few different shots I got today. Just it's just a few shots. Uh, but anyway, the, so the main differences we got here is we've got a full frame camera with a 50 millimeter lens, then we've got the G, the GH5, which is a native um, micro four thirds camera with a uh, 25 millimeter native lens. I should say is what I was trying to say there, uh, with a 25 millimeter lens on it, and at f1.8 and then we've got the 50 millimeter lens the same 50 millimeter lens that was on the full frame camera but on the the xl metabones so you know the framing like i said the framing is a bit tighter with the 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 speed booster image uh but uh, you know i kind of wanted to show you the difference to the full frame camera with the same lens same distance same aperture and then compare that to the native micro four thirds option so you know you can really see exactly what that speed booster is you know giving you in terms of depth of field and framing and all the rest of it i won't, won't go too much into the low light capabilities i mean you, it's, it's pretty simple to work that out yourself you know that a xl booster gives you roughly um, a stop and a half almost a stop and a half extra light so if you were filming uh you know at uh, iso 800 that will allow you to film about sort of my, my quick maths now but around about sort of 300 so it's a little bit less than half the number so that that's how much of an improvement you're going to be getting in terms of your your light most beast boosters is about stop so it, you know rather than going from uh, 800 to 300 it would just be from 800 to 400 so you'd have to drop down an entire stop in your ISO uh, and then get the same exposure. So that's the main difference it gives you in, in, in low light. It's, it gives you a decent improvement, a decent improvement. So it's worth considering that. Anyway, so there you go guys. So I hope this was useful. It's a bit of a, a random turn the camera on and chat about camera crap again, but I hope it was useful for any of you that are considering getting a speed booster and you really want to see the difference, you know, literally see the difference, what it, what it makes. Um, and like I said, I tried to make the test as fair as possible focus distance the same, focus on the same spot, distance from subject exactly the same, and I try to get the framing as, as close as possible as well uh, with the, the, the three different, um, well, two different cameras and three different lenses with the, one of them being the speed booster involved. Anyway guys, hope that was useful, and yeah, let me know your thoughts uh, down below. Okay, peace out.